Thank you. Thank you to be there. Uh, last night we drink, drank a lot of beer, so thank you for the organizer. So uh, <laughs> I hope that we, we are all wake up. So we, today we want to discuss cloud native and the challenges that you raise regarding IT monitoring and also try to figure out what we have today regarding monitoring in cloud native environment. So to the agenda, I will, uh, the, this is already introduced, but I will give you a brief about me. I will describe cloud native, try to describe this cloud native and the challenges for IT monitoring, and also present head up inside project. What we try to propose for cloud native monitoring, also for traditional monitoring, and if you are lucky, we will have some demo. So we cross finger. Uh, so I have a PhD in computer science in the area of distributed system and also cloud system. I finished my PhD in 2012. I'm software architect in an automotive company. I'm not there for the, this company, but uh, it is a German company, you may know, but I'm in France. I have about eight years of craftsmanship for open source monitoring. I have seven projects that I contribute. These are these two projects, but there are also projects that I contribute to. to. Uh, so, cloud native, what is? According to CNCF, cloud native bring a new paradigm with microservice architecture. You have containerized service, and everything in terms of infrastructure is distributed and orchestrated at, the, at, a, at a higher level. What this introduces is that cloud native embrace failures. This is important regarding traditional IT. In traditional IT, we already try to avoid that failure occur. If our server goes down, we are, we are not happy, and we will have a call from our boss saying, what is wrong? But here, the new paradigm say, problem, the problem is not the fact that you can have failures, but you should address failures. You should design your application, you should design your monitoring, taking into account that, Thing can fail, and thing will likely fail. In traditional IT, we try to evolve failures, but thing fail. So it is something that we will lose to try and evolve failures. That is why Clonati tried to address. For this, there are four threats. Resiliency, meaning that if it fail, we can try to recover. Agility, meaning that we can reactively change things in production, change things in our development, to be able to address failures. If you have a bug, we should have a patch quickly to be able to address these failures. We should not have a system administrator try to make some patch waiting the developer to, uh, tomorrow to fix, to fix things. So everything should be done in a way such that failures can be addressed easily. Bug, everything, you should address it easily in an agile way. You have operability. This is another important thing. Operability is not about a monitoring guy saying, okay, I'm looking at the system and everything's okay. No, it is about the application itself. They try to say, okay, I think that something may go wrong, so I may, for example, gracefully shut down without any intervention. So I, for some reason, maybe for network reason, I start having a request, um, a delay for my request. So meaning that I'm not really ready to answer request, so I will gracefully shut down. This is the application itself. The fourth thing is the observability. This is about monitoring. We will give more detail later, but here it is about you have resiliency, you have agility, you have operability, and you need to consider this to have a state, to have a view of how your IT is monitoring, is operating on your application. So there's a good book. Uh, from Clue Native. If you have time, you can read it. It is good. So, about observability, you have two main aspects. Head reporting. Important. It is not a probe, an external probe, that's saying, okay, uh, I make a ping and everything is up. No, it is the application itself that say, according to some internal metric, it say, I'm okay, I'm up, I'm working. This is about head monitoring, I'm okay. Telemetry, okay, I have some data. Uh, typically, you can have some kind of pattern, say, right? So, uh, request, number of requests I receive, 
number of errors are produced, and then the duration of each request, or maybe an average uh, duration. So this is some kind of aspect, main aspect that we have regarding observability for cloud native application. So the question is, are we ready to make monitoring in this kind of environment? Today, we have, uh, I think, as a week, okay, with static configuration. We have configuration that need to check this server and another one, but if the server fails, maybe when you have a microservice environment, we we'll use Kubernetes here. Who? No one? So, yeah. For Kubernetes, for example, you have your microservice. When the, a service goes down, a, micro, a container goes down, when the new one is started, it is not the new name, the same name. It's a new name. How you address this? With a static monitoring. You say, uh, my monitoring should uh, ping a server named uh, Toto. But if Toto die, Toto will pop up with Toto 1, Toto 2, or whatever you want. It's not the same thing. External problems. Currently, CloudNati say you should, each application, if component application, should provide information about its state itself, not external tools. So, you, but you have observability tool for cloud native, uh, namely Prometheus, Istio, or maybe Tracing, like we see, we saw, we we hear yesterday. But these, from a point of view, of bottom tools to have raw metrics for lots of components, not easily to understand or not easily to, you need to aggregate to have an, a good insight. So we need to reinvent ourselves. We need to, be, to make some dynamic uh, discovery of what we monitor. Also, find things to be able to address the, the, dynamic, the volatility that we have in a cloud native environment. So our tool needs to go in this way. That is why today, here up inside that, I start uh, initially to work with uh, Nagio, Zysinga, whatever you want. Today, we, we also go on this track. What is Real Open Insight? It is a high-level tool which aims to federate and give you an unified view of, on your IT environment. Typically, you want to have a business view of what is operating, good or not. You can collect data from various sources. You have Kubernetes, you have Isinga. I know everyone here uses Isinga, yeah? <laughs> Nagios? Uh, yeah, Centrio, yeah, there is a guy, yeah, Zavix, okay. okay, you see, you have this problem, you have the problem to have a unified monitoring, that is, we provide this tool as full open source, free open source software that you can have detail in this website, uh, sorry, it's not the demo thing yet, you have a dashboard that gives you, you build the dashboard easily, that give you a brief overview of what you have in your IT environment. You can have a view like, okay, here I have a, an item coming from Kubernetes, this one coming from Zabbix, this one from Isinga, this is one also from Kubernetes, a namespace from Kubernetes, but I can also have a view that collects information from various sources. And so I will have a tag here, we will see in the demo, hopefully, to when we have a view, that collect information from Kubernetes, from Isinga, from whatever we want. For today, we have Zabbix sources, Zabbix source, uh, Isinga, and also Kubernetes from Google Cloud. And also have you also have a report. Over time, you have a here you have some kind of counter about the number of problems you have, and you have this is correlated at one hundred percent. The number from here, everything is good for this platform for Kub system. And you also have, for this period of time, a picture that's saying, okay, I have a quarter of time uh, problem, or every time everything is okay. So I have a, SLA, a good SLA, nice. Um, you can also have a, even a feature that's saying, for this platform you have problem, you have a detail for what happened. You can go, so this is the overview of the tactical overview, but you can go deeper. If you click on this item, you will have a thing like this. In this thing, it is, in this approach, you have 
a tree-based organization of dependency organization of your, your service. I have a service named KubeSystem that depends on KubeDNS. KubeDNS had some pods, and this pod depends on this container, this one, this one, this one, four containers. So you organize it like that. Automatically, you have a free view, you have a map, and also a console here where you can have a detail about what is happening. And also a statistic about a chart about the number of low level items, this one, which are raw monitoring data. Uh, that is data raw monitoring data. You have a stat about this. So that is about uh, uh, historic and necessary analysis analytics. You can export it in Grafana. We use Grafana. Yeah, you can plug it in with PostgreSQL <laughs> sources, which is new in Grafana 5, 5.3, I think, to have it, this graph in Grafana, so you can have some uh, slides, windows, so you have all this graph in Grafana, natively. Is it to integrate? You have binary, you have sources, okay. So GitHub, you have sources, you have binary, you have Docker images, you have virtual machines images, with access graphical configuration, uh, I like. CLI, but graphical interface is sometimes good. In Wafon, you not already have a CLI to access your service. Everything is based on API integration. You can automatically discover, uh, discover service in your monitoring system. Everything is fully documented. So now, you can try to have some demo. We'll have chance. <laughs> okay, let me bring this Windows. Yeah. And let us log to this virtual machine. Oh, good. Okay. Okay, we will start by this. This is the Windows I show you, but this is a real system. It is located here. Our demo platform, free access to the demo platform. As I say, if I click here, up, what I say? You have a detail about what you organize. You can put the mouse to have some detail. You have here. Everything here is dynamic. If I refresh the console, and if it changes, you should see the change here. I think nothing changed, but if I uh, refresh, you will, not, you will see uh, nothing. But we show in next demo how things change. You can go back in the executive view. It is the view where you have this is a Wi-Fi connection. <laughs> uh, Waiting a few seconds to have a Hopefully. Okay, we go back here. It's a problem of connect connectivity. So you can click on the problem and then directly jump to the service when you have a problem. Here it is the I think I'm monitoring. Here we have to show you what is it. Here I have a I think a deployment. I have just one server. That is what you are what you have here all the component, but I can reorganize it what I want. I can delete some item, I can create a complex view, from whatever. You have here uh, the problem, you have detail, you have a statistic about problem, and also you can also switch back. For operator, you stay there, everything's so up, no problem. Like this, uh, same thing for this part. For this part, I can show you it is a component coming from a GCP, a Google Cloud Platform. I have a Kubernetes instance here with this service. I have this workload. It's a service. That's, that's where the problem is coming from. But I have this there. So this is a basic overview of what you can do. Uh, about Grafana uh, integration, I have here an uh, view I can uh, show you. Uh, can show you. I have some scripted dashboard, Grafana dashboard. So if I log in, you can see here um, the dashboard 
with some variable, with one variable that help you select the view you want to visualize. For example, here I have no point. Uh, yeah, for this I have point, so this I monitoring, so you can see everything like we showed it uh, um, before. Already, this. and for a singer, two. Okay. So you can ch for for each Grafana windows, you can change the windows to see what happened. You have details. So. so now we have to have a live demo to show how to configure things. I have here a local deployment in my virtual machine. Let me try to log in. So, uh, you have to configure sources. Here, source zero, I have a, an integration with I say Nagios, but it is all everything that is like Nagios like I think I Centrion, so that's why we have different kind of sources. So to see here you can have manager engine, you have Pandora FMS, you have Zabix, uh, Nagios, Nagios is everything uh, similar like Nagios, Xenox, and you can also add other tools. So for my source zero, I have Nagios, I need live status, listening over network. Our network in this port. And this is just some information to have this thing. But here, I will try to make a quick view. Uh, this is import uh, view importation. I select it, I take source zero, but up, oh, it doesn't work. But the problem is that it's because uh, as locally, I didn't have a single, I will try to have a tunnel access to my remote Icinga instance. Now I will start again and then up. Duke. There you go. Now I have my view. Something I make quickly, but I can design me point by point so I can say, uh, okay, let's show you. I can say, uh, okay, sorry. I can add a point, create. I can add a new point and say uh, this is an IT service for this IT service. I want to select a source zero. I see everything is Linux server sources, and then I want to take some <coughs> some item. I can select this one. Up. Then I will save what I have. Save. Now. I'm currently editing, but I can see what this is display. I select it, I have my graph, this is the point I add. And then I can refresh now. All the data I retrieve, and then I have my view update. But what I've show you, shown you before, you have a view, a, a highlight, a high level view. To do this, we use a concept of View assignment. So here I have user. Uh, yeah, I have user that I created before, but it's easy to create. Huh? You have a user, and then you say uh, the kind of view the user can have. Then I will manage view. I will select the user and apply the view I just create, and then log out. And then log in again as the user. No. Okay, I have this view. I just have one, have one view. Everything's up. But what you can see here is that you don't have historic. You don't have uh, the, the event feed. This is because you have different kind of view. I will log again as administrator and say manage user, this user, and then say we update the user and say this user can have a complete view. Update it and then log out. Log again. 
then I have more detail. So this is some kind of customization you can do. You can say, OK, my boss don't want to see uh, all the data I, I have. He just want to see uh, the high level view. You can say, OK, each, uh, this operator should have access to this, to this, or everything. So it is every, everything is customizable. So now we continue by having more examples. Uh, sorry. Okay. Similarly, I will show you for Zabbix. I have some source here, which is Zabbix for Zabbix. Um, no, this is Kubernetes sources. For Kubernetes source, you just have a, an integration with the proxy interface of Kubernetes. This is the interface that allows you to connect to your Kubernetes cluster through a local proxy. So here, I will try to start the proxy from my DCP. If I make Q CTX uh, to show I have a cluster here, normally. I have a cluster, which is my GP DCP cluster. You can see uh, CTL CTR proxy. This will start a pro local proxy, but with remote connection to my cluster. Then I can go back. This is OK now. Now I try to make a discovery based on these sources. OK. Refocus here. For traditional monitoring, I say we try every time to monitor things that we know. That cannot change. But clone is different. Kubernetes is clone native tools. So for this tool, we have clone native integration. Here you can see, sorry. I have to say it. Uh, sorry. Uh, there's a problem, sorry. Up again. Oh, no, sorry. You cannot do this for Kubernetes. Important. You cannot do this for Kubernetes because for Kubernetes or for Cloud Native, you need to discover everything. So what we should do is the uh, sources. So I have a Kubernetes sources, source, sorry, and then I can apply it. Just apply. Then I will go to manage view. Uh, no. Sorry. What is wrong? <laughs> uh, no. Normally, I should apply this. I come and. Ah, oh, sorry. Ah, oh, no sources. Sorry. My bad. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Kubernetes sources. Everything is safe. Uh, work is working. The, the, what is happening here is that uh, the real pin site is contacting the cluster and retrieve all the namespaces. And then if you go there, you will see that all the namespaces in Kubernetes has been imported. And then we do some uh, other thing. We have this user too. Now I will say this user can have access to Cube namespace to read this. Uh, OK, I will log out. And then if you log again, uh, no, no good password. OK, now the user has access to uh, the view I sent to him. Everything's OK here. And what you can see is that even here in Google Cloud Platform, you don't have access to Cube systems. But here, it's useful to retrieve the namespace, and you have a view of what is happening. This is a namespace, sorry. This is a namespace completely designed by Google to help you have a cluster in Kubernetes for information. So, But you are able there to see what is happening here. Yeah. This is OK. Zoom out. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> you have to have a good zoom, because yeah, the, good, the zoom is not good. Uh, OK. And you have SLA 
for any component. SLA are in zero information for each of the view, sorry. Voilà. And voila. Go back in the executive view, we are there, and then if you have a problem, you click on it, and everything is okay. Okay, um, I'll go back to the presentation. Uh, okay, I will show the last thing. Aggregate view. Sorry. Uh, okay. The last thing I want to show you, I talked to you about aggregation, so I will create a view now, manually, everything is manual, I will call it federate. Then I will say uh, this thing have a subservice, a new other service. This service, I will say, I think uh, I will say this is external service. Automatically, I will have all the view I have in my system. This is application service we created before. The second one is Kubernetes Redis. Here, similarly, external service. Kubernetes, Redis. I can also have uh, direct sources. I can also add another uh, item here to say this service is really a raw checks coming from uh, this source. No, cannot do this for Kubernetes. Now, I have a star sources I will show later, which is a Zabi sources. Then I can select an item here and to say save. Now I will go to the management view, view management. Oh, I see. And then my federate view, I will assign it, log out, and then. Okay, that. I have my federal view. You will see when thing will be refresh, you will see that this federal view depends on a singer. Not that you don't have the, the view expanded here. Because internally you just have to collect the last stitches of the view name I singer or the view attached to I singer node. And also there, but you can see that my Zabbix node here, it is a raw item coming from Zabbix. I will show you quickly how you integrate with Zabbix, and we will have finished with this demo. Uh, sorry. Oh, I forgot my password, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Oh, demo. What is happening? I don't know. Okay, good password. No. So uh, last thing, it is the big sources, just to give last example. You just have to connect no, sorry. <laughs> yeah. You just have to a link to your uh, Zabis uh, URL. And then here, I will not show you because it's mine. You have a string containing the login and the password. And it's OK. Then when you apply it, you are able, just to give an example, you click here to make the quick importation. Source 2, and then. Up. I import everything in like Zabbix. Knowing that, what I don't show here, 
I didn't show here, is that when you make the importation, you can set a filter here, which can be a host or a group, to avoid importing everything is one like yours, uh, hopefully. So that is the end for this talk. Uh, sorry, up. So this will be the end oh. <laughs> for this talk. Ah. So that was the last point of this talk. So I hope that you learned something. Thank you. If I have questions, feel free to ask. All right. We have some time for questions. Are there any questions? Um, can you please uh, show the aggregation screen again, where you can uh, where you uh, define the status, the worst or the, the best state? Okay, sorry, uh, I'm lost because the screen are <laughs> I change. Uh, sorry, not oh, this one. What you want is. Okay. Uh, <coughs> in the editor, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, the severity calculation rules. Ah, okay. Yeah, okay. Yes. Yeah. It's important thing. Okay. Yeah. Something. Okay. I will explain it. I have currently uh, we have currently three uh, way to calculate severity. You have what severity? Basic. Uh, it's the default way. You will say if I have uh, three components and one go, one is in failures, I have failures. I have weighted average. It is like when you have a load balancer component. So if one thing go wrong, you can continue to operate. So in this case, uh, actually, we have a, a new status in the European side to make some warning to say, okay, I have thing wrong here, but it's not critical. And the last one is. Uh, weighted average. It is more complicated with math uh, beyond. So you have the fact that for your service, you can say this service counts for 50%, second one for 25%, and the last one for 25%. You can even say, I have four components, but I have a critical component, an essential component. This component is like you have a web system, web service, and then you have a load balance behind it, before, in front of that. And you say this, the load balancer is a critical component. If the load balancer go wrong, everything is wrong. And then you can have for your web server uh, weighted uh, average. So this is a more complex way to compute severity. Yeah. And then in your three, you, this is aggregate taking into account this uh, this aspect. Yeah. Okay. okay um, Mark. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Let's say you have knowledge about the services, um, the business services in a yeah. CMDB. Yeah. Uh, can you integrate the knowledge, the data of the CMDB into this tool? Currently, to no. Currently, the, it's not integrated. But I think regarding what this tool is designed with just uh, API-based integration, you can integrate it. Uh, you have just to you have to develop some uh, just a wrapper that you integrate your real inside and that everything's up. But the core uh, algorithm, the core component, the core is a separate part. It is not mixed with, the, with where you implement the integration with a third party tool. Yeah, you can do it. Okay. More questions? No, okay, then. We will thank you for the talk at thank the OSMC. Thank, thank you. Thank you.